All right, we're back with a chat tournament 39 round two uh, semifinals between Ray Minator, who beat someone, Akiyama, and Dalimar, who beat Bid. Uh, two really nice wins. And they both played well in their wins. And now they're facing in the semifinals. Um, let's, yeah, take a look. Uh, if you want to complain that too many of the videos recently are Ray's videos, that's because he's the only person who gives me a heads up when he's playing, so I know to record. More if you give me a heads up, if you want your videos recorded. Uh, this can happen. So anyway, uh, this game importantly had no plus wall. And I think Dalimar made a really interesting move that makes me wonder if he thought plus wall was on. Because fundamentally, when you make a really... Um, high-powered play like this that is untakeable by either player in one direction and capturable in the other, the obvious thing for the opponent to do is capture it, right? But if 4616 lands in 2, 3517 would have a plus wall in 3 and combo back, and that would be a really nice situation, I think, for Dalimar. If 1266 captures in 2, the only other capture, then there's a pretty interesting setup with 1646 and 6 when 4472 is a plus and 5, and 5443 has a plus and 3. Not sure how that works out. 6632 also has the plus and 5, which could sometimes be relevant. There's low numbers facing out. It's a messy position, but it, I kind of assume that was the idea if that was captured, and it certainly looks like an interesting idea. Um, yeah, I think those are the only pluses I saw, or setups. But it's an interesting move, right? Sort of sack a card, but you have combo play against the cards that could take. Now, Ray said he was considering three moves here. Uh, he was just saying this as he was playing, and then I went off for dinner. And he sent more messages about what he was thinking for the rest of the game, but I skimmed them, and without having followed them as they were being played, they made no sense to me, so we shall ignore it. Um, so he was saying he was considering 4, 6, 1, 6, and 2, capturing, which makes sense. Uh, 4616 in 5, which sets up 1266 to have both sides, 2 and 4, and 4616 in 9, which he wrote off because, well, it's very hard for Dal to capture 4472 in 6, he didn't really have a response to the one capture there was. So he was mostly between 4616 in 2 and 5. I was kind of assuming he would go in 2 here. Uh, in general, his hand is good going up. But he went in 5, which leads to an interesting position. And at this point I wandered off, but I started thinking a bit about how I think about this kind of position and where it might be different, not on like a calculation level, but on a like what I'm looking for level than other players. So I thought it might be interesting to talk about. I'm not arguing this is correct. It just, I think, is something interesting about how I think. I would be assuming this position's difficult for me. Now, there's reasons to think Dalimar's position should be optimistic here. Um, 1, 2, 6, 6 may have both squares on our starter, but it's also Reye's only card with any left power. And so there is a very good chance Reye runs out of power and runs out of kind of useful things to do. And this could happen kind of in any side-to-side -side game. I think Reye's hand is not that well organized for a side-to-side -side game, right? Because if you play in 6, it's hard for Rey to play safely in 3 or 9, and if he does, he uses up the only card that has any left power, and that's also his card for 2 and 4. So I was kind of thinking the 1, 2, 6, 6 is overworked. But the other thing was, if I think I'm in trouble, I will just start looking to try to force a tie. And I think some people, when they're in trouble, and they will get more wins than I will out of these positions, will think, I'm in trouble, I need to complicate. And I will think, I am starting to feel the tides turning against me, I need to force a tie. And so I would start looking for the most forcing move I could find and start calculating that in the hopes I can reach a tie in it, because if I can force a tie, I can just play that line, get out of here with an ugly tie, and move on to the next game. So I was thinking 1, 6, 4, 6, and 2. That's safe. And it basically forces the reaction of 1, 2, 6, 6 in 4. Because if they don't recapture, I'm suddenly starting to lock in a whole lot of cards, right? I'm safe in 2. I'll play 4, 4, 7, 2, and 4 next. That'll be safe. That'll make 1 safe. I'm way ahead, I think. 
if they don't interact immediately. So my forcing move in two forces a reaction in four. One, two, six, six, and four, and all their left power is out of their hand. Now, maybe we don't attack the left immediately. My instinct was to play four, four, seven, two, and three, taking safety again. We're down six, four, but I think we hold the tie there. I haven't calculated it too in depth. But if they, for instance, if Ray A plays 6, 3, 5, 2, and 6, that is safe. There are now cards in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. But I can play 5, 4, 4, 3, and 7, the worst card in my hand. It doesn't capture anything, but importantly, it cannot be captured. And my 3, 5, 1, 7 is guaranteed to capture at the end, either because the 7 dominates or because it goes in 8 and captures Flan in 5. Um... They don't have to go in 6 there, but if they start in 7, I think we just play 3, 5, 1, 7, and 8, and we're fine. So I, my instinct here is I think 2 forces a tie, and so I would play 2. But I also think the move Dalimar played is really interesting. Um, my second instinct, by the way, is to make it a side-to-side -side game. Is to say, Rey has these two powerful corners, but his other cards are more up down than side to side maybe you go six but i'm not sure there's a good card for six and you want to make sure one six four six lands in some point in two because that's the most valuable thing you have going and we can't leave two and four open forever because except for one six four six and two any card other card we play in either of those squares is hit by such a brutal combo for us so it's very dangerous to play around at this point and or potentially hit, right? 3, 5, 1, 7, and 2 is not currently hit by a combo, but would be if 5 ever flips. Yeah, so it's just really dangerous to play around, and I would think to start getting rid of the danger squares. But I also, the move Dal played, I think, deserves serious consideration here. 3, 5, 1, 7, and 8, because it's also saying something that's really the key to this position. That 1, 2, 6, 6 is your card for every square. And as soon as you're asked to play cards in other squares, they're overworked, right? 1, 2, 6, 6 is the only capture in 9. Notably, Dal has a combo back. Um, again, Dal is both the starter and this move have very much been played of kind of, if you attack my cards, I have combo play. Which I think is always a fun way to watch someone play. Um, so 1, 2, 6, 6, and 9 is comboed by 4, 4, 7, 2, and 6. And there's no combo back because you just used your big combo card. Uh, 1266 is also the card for 2 and 4. It's only going to be able to land in one of those squares. So our goal as Dalimar is to run it out of things it can do usefully. And our goal as Reaminator is to make sure when it lands in one of those squares, it is decisive. Because the rest of your cards aren't going to do very much. None of his other cards have a capture in 4. None of his other cards even have a capture in 2. None of them have a capture in 9. None of them have a capture in 7. So this really interesting battle here, and I didn't actually see the rest of the game. Uh, I do know the result, but I didn't see how we got there. But I think we're we're in a battle of can Ray A keep those squares open, or when he uses them, hit hard, and can Dalimar start shutting them off so that card has to be played, and where Dalimar can attack whatever happens there. So, what happens next? Ray plays in 7. So this is really logical to what we're saying. He plays a card that is safe, right? He finds a way to get his hand to have value on the board. And he doesn't remove any of the squares 1, 2, 6, 6 dominates. Now, if Dalimar goes in 4, Ray goes in 2, and combos a whole lot of things, notably... 3517 doesn't flip though. So, okay. What if we sack a card in four? We should check the line, right? We sack a card in four. Ray combos in two. He's going to flip one. He's going to flip four. He's going to flip five. He's going to be up seven to three. But 1266 is not that powerful a card, but it is just powerful enough. Yeah. So something like 4, 4, 7, 2, and 3 is close to being a tie there, but not quite. I guess Ray could go in 9, or he can go in 6. But like, if that captured the 1, 2, 6, 6, if it was a 1, 1, 6, 6 landing in 2, uh, that would almost tie, but still not quite, because Ray could go in 9. 
Okay. So four doesn't really work. I think two can't work. You know, if you play one, six, four, six, and two, which we know is a square Dalimar would really love to occupy. That's the only like useful thing he can do in two. But Rhea just goes in four and he's up six, four, and that card in five safe. Yeah, that's not doing it. I don't think this is the kind of position you want to go in three, because fundamentally you're not trying to set up more combo squares, you're trying to get rid of the opponent's combo squares. On the other hand, five, four, four, three, and three gives Dal a legitimate combo in six with four, four, seven, two that's quite powerful. That's interesting. A one, six, four, six also sets that up, but I am hesitant to use one, six, four, six. Five, four, four, three, and three. Does that work? Let's come back to that. That's interesting. We'll, we'll, we'll file that under interesting. If you go in six, I think Ray just plays any card other than his sweeper in nine. And I think you just lose. Right? You're up six, four but it's going to land with such powerful effect in two or four. And you just have no captures back, right? Four is dead to Dalimar. Dalimar needs to get four off the board. But he can't go in four. Okay, what about seven? You go in seven here. The five facing up, that walks into combos. A four facing up, mm, that isn't it. Okay, I think five, four, four, three, and three is the the try. What happens there? So one thing Ray could do is try to leave two and four open, and play in either six or nine. If he plays in nine, let's say he plays something in nine with a six up. Then my idea for Dalimar was to play 1646 in 4. With the point that if Ray A goes in 6, Dalimar can recapture 3 and captures 5 to tie 5-5. Five, five. And if Ray A goes in um, in 2, then Dalimar combos back. But that combo back doesn't actually flip five, uh, one, six, four, six, and four. But it doesn't need to, because it's going to flip anything in nine, it's going to flip five, it's going to flip three, and you're still going to have the card in eight. So that should tie. Okay, so I think you tie against nine. If five, four, four, three, and three, um, what if Ray blocks six? That's probably the problem. Like six, three, five, two, and six. Yeah, that looks like a problem. Okay, I think Ray can block six. Yeah, so I think this is just a win for Ray. Like, I think the co his combo potential here is too strong. Four is too bad a square for Dalimar. What's interesting, though, is a side six, it, this might work. Five, four, four, three, and three. Um... Uh, two probably works as well. Okay, not a great idea. Yeah, I think this is busted. I'll check later with the solver. Um, I think in the last video I said I would check with the solver at the end, and I didn't. But um, when I input them for my tournament scores, I do check. And I did check the last one after the fact. My analysis was very good, so go me. Uh, this one, I think we will check here, and we'll see if my analysis is any good. Um, Dalimar goes in two. Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't find a save here, so that's that's not going to do it, I don't think. Yeah, Ray goes in four. And Dalimar, as he often does, it's like giving the big win, right? He's letting Ray A go up eight to two and three, and uh, Ray A does not take it, wins six four. Okay, uh, really interesting game. I think the battle at this point is very interesting of... Can Dal draw the 1 2 6 6 out of the hand or find some counterplay against it? And can Ray A find useful things to do with his remaining cards? And it seems like Ray A won that battle. 
I think eight ends up being a mistake, but actually it's a move I think is quite interesting here and I quite like. And uh, yeah, let's flip over in a moment to the solver. I will pause the recording so you don't have to see me inputting cards and we'll, we'll go check. All right, we're back, we're solvering, and uh, it'll take a little bit to tell me the evaluation of this move, so I'm just gonna get it started. Um, Ray A goes in five. Also take me a little bit to get the evaluation of that move. Um, Thalamar goes in eight. And there is the question, is there a win here? And there is a win here. And the win is, two to take it immediately. Very interesting. Yeah, I guess Dal has no counterplay in four, so this makes a lot of sense. I honestly, like, didn't think about this. Um, you know, I just kind of assumed you keep the power, but Dalimar is no up, so, you know, if he does, if he does capture this with something, let's say, this way, it makes sense that a whole lot of squares are going to be dead to him, right? I assume this is winning, yeah. All right, that, I mean, that makes a ton of sense, right? Four is dead for Dalimar. Make him use it. So Ray's move, there is a tie here. I didn't find it. Huh, and Dalimar came really close. Actually, really impressive. The tie's in two. The tie is four, five, four, four, three, and two, which I, I just wrote off because you get comboed. And I didn't think there were ever good enough sweepers here, but those six is up. Ooh, that's very clever, right? Is this it? Yeah, this is it. Oh, that's very clever. So this move looks kind of silly that Dalimar made, but actually it's really close to the best move here, and this is a very hard tie to find. If you found this while I was uh, not finding it, please give yourself a huge congratulations, because that's a, that's a great tie to find. Well done to anyone who spotted that. That's um that's one of the one of the really cool ties, and Dalimar came remarkably close to it. Really interesting game. Yeah. Ray misses a win. This win made sense, but I was sort of thinking the same way Ray was here, so I can't I can't blame him on it. There's a game I played against Delial in something where it was um that one where you pick a terrible hand so they're stuck with it in the second game. And so uh, I had picked a more terrible hand for him than he had picked for me, so I had a big advantage on the hands. And he played an adjacent corner to my starter, and I missed the win because the win was just he didn't have a capture somewhere and I could just punish it. And I sort of forgot about that as I was thinking through like all the other things happening in the position, but the answer was quite straightforward. And here the answer is, you know, like, grab the cards. One and five are yours. But this makes a lot of sense, and this tie is very hard to find. Yeah, in general, this looks like a really difficult position for Dalimar. And, uh, yeah, it says five moves tie here. So my guess was this was one of them. And I'm asking. This does tie, nice, okay. Um, I thought there was a chance one of the ties was in six. Not sure exactly what it would be. Let's try something in six. No, this doesn't work. Um, well, that was my guess. Um, let's actually just have it tell me. Uh, okay. There's the tie in two. In fact, there's two ties in two. This is also a tie in two. That makes sense, because the 1266 isn't going to land in both 3 and 4, so that's going to be very similar to this. I think you'd kind of always do it this way, but that this way works as well makes a lot of sense. Uh, so also, this ties. That's a little unexpected. We'll come back to that. This ties. So there was a move in 6 that was good. It just wasn't my first instinct. Um, and 4 to 6 ties. So making it a side-to-side -side game was a very good strategy. One strategy is we have to get rid of two and four, and the other is we have to make it a side-to-side -side game. And those are the two strategies here. Interesting. But this move um, surprises me, because this position does not look ideal. There are two ties here. One is this, which, you know, if you're like, ah, yes, I'm going to play four so that when they combo me, I can play one safe card not attacking anything. 
yeah, if you see that tie, well done, but like this is not a human tie. Um, so that that tie is kind of silly. What's the other tie? The other tie is here. I mean, I guess, yeah, you have drawn all the left power out of their hand. So there's also the question of, okay, what if Ray says, I want to keep my left power, but there's no safety here, right? Do something like this, again, you have to run out of left power. Um, apparently this one doesn't work, because you do combo to win. But I assume something like that. Um, maybe you start here? Or here? I don't know. What did the solver tell me? There's one tie, yeah, it's in two. Okay. Interesting game. Yeah, really interesting fight over squares. Um, I find this position really interesting. And really phenomenal potential save here. That Dalimar played the closest move to playing, which is really cool. Yeah. Nice win by Ray. Interesting game overall. I uh, hope you enjoyed it.